Under the Tampa skyline, Sidney Moore put more than two years of silence to an end. First, talking about the last day Heather Elvis was seen, a day when he says she left notes on his car at work. So I called her, told her, said, hey, look, I don't know if it's notes, you know, whatever. Enough's enough. Stop calling me. Stop texting me. She says, I don't know why it has to be like this or something like that. And I'm like, look, this, you just need to stop. It wasn't what you think it was. It was just... Moore says he stopped the relationship months before after his wife Tammy found out. He says Tammy only spoke with Heather on the phone and that conversation was about leaving him. She started talking to her about, hey, will you go to an attorney with me to get a divorce? Um, and she said, sure, no problem. Back to the day Elvis's car was found at Peachtree Landing, Moore says he started receiving phone calls. One from Terry Elvis, Heather's father, the next from detectives. He told them he had talked to Heather the day before, but had not seen her since October. At and this was, point, did you know what was I going on? I didn't know exactly. They said that they hadn't heard from her, but I had been told by friends and stuff that it had happened a lot. Moore uh, says hours later, so detectives like, came okay, by his home, and he claims they even called Heather's phone from his so cell phone. He says the next few weeks were full of threats from the public and more inquiries from police. I cooperated from the very first time anyone contacted me. I never said, call my attorney, I'm not talking to you, none of that. Um, do you feel like people know that? No, I don't think they do. When they came and asked to look in our house, we let them look in our house with no warrant. Look around, do what you want to do. Moore says that all changed February 21st at 7.30 a.m. You don't feel like a suspect and they come in and they arrest you. What he you tells me of? I'm under arrest and I'm like, what for? And he goes, I'll tell you later. And I'm like, you don't have an arrest warrant? He goes, not on me. I'm like, all right. And I looked at the U.S. Marshal and he goes, and I'm like, okay, I guess it's legit. You know, I still could never figure out why they arrested my wife. And the morning I was arrested, I found out she had been arrested. And I'm like, what, what for? The hell did she get arrested for? And I was told she was charged with the same things I was. I said, how in the hell did she get charged? She didn't even know her. Moore says the bond hearing for those charges changed everything. What was so peculiar to you about that bond hearing? Um, that bond hearing was unlike any other. Um, my attorney kind of shook his head when I talked to him after. He goes, it wasn't a bond hearing. He said, they just tried you. And he goes, you don't present evidence at a bond hearing. Why do you think they did? I think it was, I know it was. I know it was to give the public perception, look at all this crap we've got on them. They had to have done it. They tried us and we were convicted that day. Moore maintains no real evidence of a murder or kidnapping was ever presented. A recent pretrial hearing shows a truck believed to be Sydney's could be one piece of that evidence. I don't think it was my truck. So you're saying it could be your truck, but you were not in it? I'm saying no one I knew was in it. Absolutely no one I knew. If it was my truck, I didn't know about it. How and, did that happen? Well, remember um, I told you the police took my truck for 11 days, um, which is a week longer than they normally ever hold one for. Um, I don't know that the day and time is right on the video that they're using in court. I still think today, I, I, I know I'm innocent, there's a chance that it'll be okay. Um, but the crooked that's gone on in you always makes you wonder a little, they've gotten away with this for two years, over two years, how far can they go?